It's game two of our ACC Network triple header. And tonight from Charlottesville, Virginia, it's round two. The NC State Wolfpack 10 and 9, and the 15th ranked Virginia Cavaliers this time playing on their home floor inside John Paul Jones Arena. In the ACC, it's become a two-team race for that top seed at the ACC tournament next month in Greensboro, North Carolina. The Florida State Seminoles, the head-to-head -head matchup winners against Virginia sitting second. NC State still trying to climb with a few games to go in the regular season, sitting at six and eight. Glad you're with us here tonight. My cousins along with Jordan Cornette, both from home this evening. And Jordan, let's start with the Cavaliers, who are in a rare spot right now, having dropped two straight. It's the first time they've done that this year. Yeah, Mike, and in those two games, Virginia looked good against Duke. They just couldn't close it out. That's something that's going to linger a little bit. They got ran out of the gym against a very special Florida State team that played really well that day. How do you fix all that? Return home, a place where Virginia has been perfect. Get back to winning at the most critical time in the season leading up to the tournament where you want to be on your game. 9-0 and at JPJ this year. They can get a little bit better with a big performance from Trey Murphy, who was quiet against Duke. Simply too talented of a performer to only take a couple shots versus Duke. Coach Bennett wants to make a concerted effort to get the young man more involved. Think back to that first matchup versus the Pack. Trey Murphy went for 18 in that game. So did Sam Hauser. 12 from Jay Huff. That front line led the way as it has all season long. He's a dynamic talent. At his best, when those feet are set, square up catch and shoot guy. But he's also good at identifying spots to be a receiver, moving without the basketball. He's a high IQ guy. He needs to be aggressive in hunting his. That's when Virginia's at their best. It's an offensive-minded team because of guys like him. Jordan, NC State had a big This year, they've had to recalibrate due to injury. Three freshmen playing significant time. And three freshmen that at this point in the season, you start calling them sophomores. They've logged enough time. At They've gotten more experience in it showing. Cam Hayes is a shot maker. Still needs to limit the turnovers, but he's distributing it confidently. Moore is giving them that athleticism, that extra handler coming off the bench. Sebron, that was his best game in a pack uniform. Can that momentum carry over? They're going to need the young guys. Their first matchup this year was close throughout. It was a seven-point Virginia victory. Part two between the Wolfpack and the Cavaliers comes right after this. Kevin Keats in the NC State Wolfpack looking to make it two victories in as many years inside John Paul Jones Arena, getting a win here last year for the first time since 2005 in what has been a pretty lopsided series. Virginia having won nine of the last ten. Last year was a 53-51 NC State win. As Wolfpack fans know, a very differently composed team a year ago. They're in the road red and black today and Virginia in the home whites. And you can always expect some fashionable footwear from Kevin Keats. Just a casual flex from one of the coolest guys in the game. The loafers, no socks, showing the ankles, looking good. Not ashy, might I add. Well executed from Coach early on. <laughs> An impressive feat in the winter months, to say the least. Yes, here's Jericho Hellams driving the lane, putting it up for Manny Bates, who then recollects. And Hellams, who is dangerous from 17 feet and in, this is off back iron, and Kihei Clark has it for UVA. Pack early on, trying to test at the rim. Do the Lions share their work, most especially as of late inside? That pack line's not going to make it easy. Something's going to have to give through the 40 tonight. Clark out for Huff, who then shares it back. And it's Beekman stuck at the logo. Seven to shoot. Long try goes off for Hauser. The Wolfpack playing pretty well right now, all things considered, having lost Devin Daniels for the season with a knee injury. They've won back-to-back -back games for the first time in 2021 with wins over Pitt last Wednesday and Wake Forest over the weekend. That ball belongs to Virginia. So Devin Daniels hurt that knee, a torn ACL January 27th in their win against Wake Forest. He led the team... In scoring, assists, steals, and was on the floor for about 80% of the available minutes. So back-to-back -back victories as their scoring has gone up in those wins as well. Hey, 
There's a shoe down on the floor. That belongs to Beekman. So a temporary four-on-five possession for UVA does not end with a bucket on the fadeaway from Hauser. Always marvel at how quickly these guys get the shoe back on. Are you kidding me? Like, nobody gets down and ties them? How are we lacing up these days? I, I don't understand. No shoehorn, no nothing. That's uh, that's very impressive. It takes me probably like 45 seconds to put. You want a basketball shoe to be tight, right? <laughs> Three-pointer. Good from Cam Hayes, who scored 11 in back-to-back -back games. You want to beat Virginia. The blueprint is you're going to have to knock down shots beyond the arc. Cam Hayes is more than capable from the three-point line. Can't let him have that rhythm bounce and a look like that. Yeah, that's one of the concerns for Kevin Keats, NC State's head coach coming into this game, is the ability to hit perimeter shots and the ability on the drive to kick it quickly because of how fast Virginia's defense will converge. Jordan, three trips down the floor and three misses for Hauser. Great job from Sebron there. Every shot that's been taken early on in this one has been contested from the pack. Engaged, defensively, disciplined as well. The patented Virginia double team comes over in the post and gets the steal they were looking for, forcing it out of the hands of Funderburg for the turnover. So Mike Funderburg sees that coming. That needs to be a retreat dribble, create some space, locate an open receiver for a clean look. Poor execution leads to the turnover. Huff steps back beyond the arc. His shot rims in and out. Slow start offensively for UVA. Hellums with the dish and the finish for Sebron at the rim. 5-0 Wolfpack. That's a beautiful sequence. And you're starting to see in these first few minutes laying out how you have to get your offense versus Virginia. Open floor opportunities. In the Duke win over Virginia, they got 14 transition points. There's got to be a thought process from the pack. Let's get out early, not allow this Virginia defense that is stifling at times to congeal in the half court. Bates on Huff, and the turnaround is nearly impossible to defend at his height. You'll live with that. I mean, you got to push off the block. Huff is a gifted scorer, uh, one of the best players in this conference, and has been a consistent guy. That's just a, that's a tough play to finish, and you'll ride with his ability to do that for 40 minutes. And this is a situation now four minutes into the game with both bigs on the floor for NC State, both Thunderbird and Bates. No fouls committed by either side so far. The second three goes for Cam Hayes. Eight to five, eight to two, rather. But it starts with a pack getting the low post touch. Nothing there. Bates being selfless, kicking out to a wide open shooter. Take what that defense gives you. Thunderbird denied the pass up top for Hauser. On the baseline, the finish for Murphy as he gets on the board. Good to see Murphy get going early, moving without the basketball. If you're going to watch, he's going to move. High IQ players on the floor for Virginia and Pack, and the Pack both executing early. Sebron to the corner. Helms lets it fly. The three is good. A little chatter as he comes back down the floor, and the Wolfpack are hot out of the gates. Four of their first five have gone, including three for three from deep. I mean, of course you're going to talk smack. Three and three, you can't miss from beyond the yard. If you get that going, you're going to be able to compete versus Virginia. And if you get it going like that, you're going to beat Virginia. they got to be tighter defending, run these guys off the line. That possession almost collapsed on itself after Helms went for the steal and missed. But great recovery defense from NC State. Sebron drives. He's turned away, rejected by Huff. But NC State has done a great job defending Virginia thus far. And when we come back, Jordan gives us an inside look at exactly how the best do it. NC State leads Virginia by seven early on. But I want to show you Virginia and what they've been seeing defensively from the opposition. A lot of switching going on. Virginia needs to be opportunistic you see both guys are going to run towards the shooter or the dribbler. That leaves Huff open for the catch and shoot. You miss the opportunity there. Empty possession leads to a turnover. Show you a couple more possessions here. Again, versus Duke. It's going to be Huff the screener. Watch both Duke defenders are going to jump Hauser. Hauser has the opportunity as the dive got hit Huff. They execute there. Again, it's going to be switches all game long. Here's Kihei Clark. Huff is the screener. 
Clark has a chance to get down low to Huff with a height advantage down low. He doesn't do it. They settle for a low percentage opportunity. You're going to see switches all game long. The snap judgment and decision making from Virginia will be magnified. Can they make the proper decision? One of the advantages, too, in Darion Sebron getting a little bit more playing time for NC State that has been talked about is his length at six foot seven. He's bigger than some of the other guys he's guarding. Here on the floor right now, you see Braxton Beverly into the game for the first time for NC State. They do lose some height there. Seven inches difference between Sebron and Beverly. The ball finds its way to Hauser. And the cold start for UVA continues. Hauser 0 for 4. And that was an offensive rebounding opportunity, a place where typically Virginia makes you pay when you give them a bonus possession. Couldn't do so. Post feed for Bates. He drops it off to find Funderburg on the opposite block. Double comes. Murphy was late coming help side. That needs to be a turnover going the other way. Tick too late to react weak side. That's a bucket for the pack. That's one Virginia needs to be better and more sound connected as a group defensively not to allow plays like that to happen. Now, Tony Bennett talked about it to us saying that it was the breakdowns in their non-negotiables and being excellent on defense certainly qualifies among those but the post double is a staple for them to be able to do those things and draw on the whiteboard. Here's the line where you guys are currently playing and then draw another line above that and say, here's where I think you can get to. And that's really good coaching is getting players to do things that even they didn't know or think they could do. And let me tell you where that comes from, Mike. No Mamadi Diakite, no Braxton Key, two guys that erased a lot of mistakes, but also new pieces on this roster playing huge roles. I talk about Trey Murphy being late weak side. That's a Rice transfer who hasn't been in the program long enough to understand the expectation there, no matter how talented he is. And with six seconds on the shot clock, a deep three falls no good. Adding to that point, Sam Hauser. Reese Beekman. I mean, these are new pieces that, that are learning as the season grows that this is how good defense is played, this is how elite defense is played. And that's the expectation at Virginia. Helms was looking for the feed as he came down the lane. And that ball goes out of bounds off Virginia, stays here. Mike, watch the double come here when it gets dumped down low to Bates. Huff comes over. That's just a cut where, where you're, Murphy's not, he's watching the ball. Murphy's not watching that. I need to get to the spot, protect the goal. An offensive player in Funderburg slides right underneath him for the basket. You can't be watching the basketball. You got to get to your area and see both. Moore guarded by Morcell. Sebron on the dribble, seven on the shot clock for NC State. Virginia smothering at every step except the final one of the journey that ends at the rim for Jericho Helms. It's good spacing from the pack, allowing for a driving lane where Helpsai can't get there. Opportunistic with the baseline drive, but it all started with spacing and ball movement coming from the pack. They've looked good here early on. Almost a four-minute scoring drought for Virginia as NC State has gone on a 7-0 run and put an exclamation point on it with a block from Moore. Give me that. Moore said, not today, my cousins. Well, really, Jordan, things could not be going much better for NC State to start this game. Yeah, Cam Hayes set the tone there, but the rest of these, you're going to see ball movement. That thing is not sticking, and that's been a theme in these last few wins for the Pack. They've been playing as a connected group, distributing that basketball, and I talked about Moore's athleticism coming off the bench. It's also a confidence that he exudes when he steps out there making an immediate impact, and that's why that stylish coach right there, Coach Keats, is such a fan of the lucky lefty in jersey number two. It's sad to think that with coaches like Kevin Keats and Jay Wright, we may never see their sartorial splendor in full display ever again if coaching attire stays this way. That's a, that's a great point. That is a fan. But at leisure is where it's at now anyway. I mean, I, <laughs> it's I feel what, like it's that, what we're all wearing at home. I mean, let's be honest. <laughs> so Virginia has started out shooting 2 of 13. Meanwhile, the Wolfpack 6 of 10 from the floor including three of their first four three-point tries. They've gotten some very good looks. 
More the drive and a beautiful southpaw finish. And again, great spacing allows for what are very capable drivers that enjoy playing downhill in this pack perimeter, finding ways to attack the rim. Guys fighting through screens with the pack. I mean, they are engaged defensively because of how well things are going on the offensive side. Some early Francisco Cafaro action, and he puts it through. It's his first field goal attempt since January 25th, and he's now up to 16 points on the year. Cafaro's in his game because Coach Bennett's not happy with the effort from his front line early on. So you want a ruggedness, you want a toughness, bring in your blue-collar big. And again, in isolation right here, just bullies Thunderbird down low. Lowers the boom at the left shoulder, finishes over the top. Jordan, to go back to the point you made about the ball not sticking and, and playing well as a cohesive unit for NC State, why do you think that's been the case when they've had to restructure the priorities for where this team scores this year? Because, look, when you're replacing, let's, let's forget, not forget in all of this that Markel Johnson is no longer part of this pack team, nor is C.J. Bryce. Everybody's talking about Devin Daniels, which was huge to this season. But further than that, you've got young guards dominating the basketball so there's going to be mistakes made throughout a season as they start to learn and understand they start to play more competent basketball the ball moves you get better shots and that's why they're the second highest field goal shooting team uh, percentage wise in the conference and number one the team opposing them today and down by 13. a defender just about everywhere hauser steps and that drop, so UVA got their first points in the paint on the last possession, and Hauser finally gets his first points of the day. And that's a place where the pack can struggle at times, on the defensive backboard. You don't want to give an efficient offense, despite the fact that it's struggling in Virginia, opportunities to right the ship with second chance. Kafara late to recover on the hedge, and that's an easy two at the bucket for Bates. 21-8 NC State. You know, that's been something we've seen a little less of this year, Jordan, as well, with the forward group for Virginia. Less of that hard hedging because of the ability to recover back to the basket. Yeah, absolutely. In these last two games, though, Mike, it's been a struggle defensively for Virginia. So they played well against Duke, but they were not getting stops in that game. Everybody knows what happened with Florida State is Florida State got whatever they wanted. But it also starts with an ability to knock down the outside shot. Uh, to open up driving lanes and, and make this defense commit to you out there. Pack have done that early on. Callum's going to work on McCoy. The lane gets clogged up with Bates in the way. That shot nearly fell. The lead 11, 8, 20 in the first half. NC State and Virginia meeting for the second time this year. Virginia a winner by seven in the first meeting and the Cavaliers a perfect 9-0 at home this season. Clark too much sizzle on it. Here comes Sebron quickly down the floor as he waits for the rest of the group in red to catch up. Beverly sends it to Moore and that careens out of bounds. Virginia basketball. 21-10, 7.50 to go. More questions than answers for the home squad right now. The ACC's Committee for Racial and Social Justice in conjunction with its member institutions have identified February 20th to 28th as ACC Unity Week. As a part of the initiative, members of the NC State Wolfpack and Virginia Cavaliers join one another on the court to demonstrate their commitment to seeing each other as equals and treating each other with respect and dignity at all times, recognizing that our differences don't divide us, but make us stronger. Along with Jordan Cornett, Mike Cousins, 7.50 to play in the first half in what has been an exceedingly quick game. Only a few whistles have stopped play thus far. And NC State looking to avenge a loss earlier this conference season against Virginia has gotten off to a good start, shooting 60% and limiting the Cavaliers to under 30% from the floor. Tip ball becomes 
a Wolfpack ball, and Cam Hayes controls it for NC State. That was one of the worries for Tony Bennett, was the balls that had become, you know, in football, the pick six, in basketball, the pick two. And that time it ends up with a foul. That's only Virginia's first turnover in the game. So many times when you analyze the pack, it's they got to win the turnover margin. They, they've got to turn their opponent over 15 times to get to a favorable spot. Well, that's not going to happen versus Virginia. So if you're talking turnovers, the focus is can the pack take care of the basketball, which they've done as well. After we're done here, we'll cap off our triple header with number 11 Florida State taking on Miami in Coral Gables. It's here on ACC Network and the ESPN app. Hardly a hotter team right now than the Seminoles. Florida State taking over first place in the ACC. They've won eight of their last nine. Joe Lenardi has them seeded as a number three seed right now with Virginia a number four seed in the latest bracketology. So much talk about Baylor and Gonzaga versus the field. Well, you catch Florida State on a day like Virginia did. That's the type of team in Florida State that can go out there and beat a Baylor, can go out there and beat a Gonzaga, can go out there and beat a Michigan, a true national title contender. The beauty of the tournament, you know, as Duke learned a couple years ago, even a team out of the American Conference can be dangerous, so anybody can get you on any given day. And certainly looking forward to both the ACC tournament and eventually the NCAA tournament as well, in whatever form or fashion it ends up being played. So no Hauser on the floor at the moment for Virginia. That ball is going to NC State. These are empty possessions. I mean, there's no movement. That was simply Trey Murphy bring the basketball down, dribble, 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 try to drive and kick to somebody who wasn't there. That's not going to cut it. Uh, you've got to move that basketball, make them work. That was just a straight line drive with no path or opportunity there. Credit packs defense making a meet resistance, but you've got to work it around and have more productive possessions than that. That's not going to cut it in cutting this deficit. Tony Bennett has altered the lineup a little bit here over the last couple of timeouts. Just trying to see if he could get anything working from the offense. Bates gives it up, and there's Sebron to finish. That's unacceptable. Kihei Clark just losing track of his defensive assignment. Sebron just cut right in front of him to the basket. 14 points in the paint for NC State, getting whatever they want against this pack line defense. His performance from Virginia so far is just antithetical to the way that they play under Tony Bennett, especially giving up those easy opportunities at the rim. There's McCoy, and he finds success floating across the lane. Kihei Clark hasn't had much success being able to drive and kick. A lot of the offense comes from the ability of Kihei Clark to be a playmaker off the bounce to open up for catch and shoot. Jay Huff also has not inserted himself in this game offensively like he typically does. Loader around and just off the rim for Hayes. And Jordan, you remember to the last game, there were a couple plays that stood out in the second half where it was Jay Huff finding Trey Murphy on some backdoor cuts. But the Wolfpack have not had any lapses like that, although they do here, leaving Clark wide open for three. I don't know if that fits as a broadcaster jinx because that <laughs> was absolutely one of those mental lapses that allow Kia Clark for the look. Uh, but again, it's the switching everything. They are flashing some doubles here and there. Virginia made a pay on that. Thunderbird was ready for the dribble this time. Yeah, that's a retreat dribble that is necessary. What does that dribble help him to accomplish, Jordan? Gives him a clear path. You're avoiding the pressure, getting away from it to collect and deliver to a teammate. So many times guys catch the double comes, they get flustered, and they try and throw it over the top. Well, you're throwing directly in the hands. It's a deflection, and it goes the other way. The retreat dribble allows you some space away from the defender, a clear path to deliver, and a free throw opportunity from Hayes like this. So Hauser returns. Leading scorer for this team, 15 points a game, coming off 19 Saturday against Duke. Sending Murphy for a brief spell. 
And in the first matchup against NC State, he poured in 18 to help lead Virginia. It's a big lineup right now with Kafaro, Huff, and Hauser all on the floor for UVA. And it's because they want some interior toughness, some resistance at the rim. Do a better job protecting, which is a staple to Virginia's defensive success. Hauser guarded by a tenacious Hellums. They look inside for Huff, who's had success off that block today. And he gets clipped as he goes up. Funderburk and Bates both in the area. That's the first foul called against the Wolfpack. It's one of the better offensive possessions we've seen from the Hoos here. Work that ball around, go down low to Jay Huff, who's the best facilitator and decision maker, aside from Kihei Clark, on the roster. Foul is on Funderburk. We got a great men's lacrosse doubleheader for Saturday right here on ACCN and the ESPN app. Number eight, Notre Dame, hosts Robert Morris in South Bend at 4 Eastern. And then it's number two, Virginia, taking on number nine, Syracuse. That's all Saturday here on the ACC Network and the ESPN app. Well, slow start for Virginia. They were just two of their first 13 from the floor, five of their last nine since to make it an eight-point game. Largest lead for NC State has been 14. Bates turns and leaves it short. It's out of bounds off the Wolfpack big man and back to Virginia, 345 in the first half. The gap is closing, but the Wolfpack still in front. It's a little bit more quiet than usual inside John Paul Jones Arena tonight. No staff in the non-staff in the arena because of arising cases in Charlottesville and in the university. So previously there were some guests allowed, some fans, students, a very small number. But back on February 16th, the university implemented further restrictions to try and address the spread, and they'll be reevaluated coming up on Friday. But for now, a smaller gathering than normal in Charlottesville. So the, the numbers are just like, there's, it's too big to comprehend, but you just know, Jordan, that at this point, everyone has been impacted in some way. Case in point, that North Carolina right now is playing Marquette at home. Yeah, it, it's been a wild season, and my thought always goes to, like everybody's health and safety of the players, but also just uh, their mental state at this point. It's taxing for them to be dealing in isolation, uh, continuing to play through and forge on. And uh, a lot of credit goes to these student athletes for what they'd have to bear, as well as the coaching staffs and including staff surrounding the programs. The efforts they have made to ensure that this season continues on despite the attrition, incredibly average. Yeah, I know it's a point that's been beaten to death about other teams and, uh, you know, other circumstances in the league over the past week, but I don't blame any player who says, I'm done playing this season, whether it's for their career or just for the end of the season, or if a team has said, you know, it's simply not worth it to us to not play anymore, because if you live in a dorm or you live in a hotel and you have to have your meals delivered to you, like, that's just not the way humans are built to operate. Yeah, and especially when you look at uh, the 18-year-olds, the freshmen who are just getting acclimated to college uh, in general being away from home. You know, if, if anybody's better suited for it, if there's such a thing, it's the upperclassmen. And for these freshmen, I mean, you talk about having your world rocked and flipped upside down, and those are the ones that I really think about because I remember back to my playing days as a freshman, you feel so disconnected and far from home, and that adjustment period is very real. Or turned away on the drive. Shot clock is at 10 for NC State. Hayes launches a deep one and front rims it into the hands of Sam Hauser. The Pack have had early success from beyond the arc, but it's been through ball boot. Settling for plays like that, it's not what you want. They've had success also driving it. These guards need to continue to try and play downhill and attack this Virginia defense, see if they can get stops. They haven't been able to do so early on in this one. Success feed in the post as well. Here's Clark on the drive. And Huff stuffs it back through. Emphatic finish from Jay Huff. We saw some great stuffs at the rim from him against Duke. He gets one there. Two minutes in the first, a four-point game.
Jay Huff with a nasty stop. Only Virginia's second basket at the rim tonight. But Mike, it starts with Kihei Clark being able to carve up the defense, get into the painted area. A good driving opportunity and shot begets an offensive rebounding opportunity for Jay Huff to huff puff and put it back down. And here I thought he was a unicorn, but you've just called him a magic dragon. Either way, they Coming certainly on. appreciate him on the floor. Second in the conference in field goal percentage. Unicorn? It's Hoonicorn, Mike. What are we doing here? <laughs> People uh, on I'm the sure, grounds know. I'm sure there's a t-shirt to be worn with a with a saying like that that I've have yet to be made known about. I wish I could take credit for it. Those that know, know. Now you do, Mike. Good ball moving on the possession from Virginia. Hauser rims it out. Thunderbird has his trip to the basket altered. Tipped out of bounds. A minute six to go. NC State with the ball and a six-point lead. Coming up at the half on our State Farm Halftime Report, we'll visit with our friends Packer and Durham to look at some of the best ACC teams at the moment. You're watching one of them. Virginia second in the league. And a look at first half stats and highlights, which over the last few minutes have gotten much better for Virginia as the Cavaliers have gotten hot and are on the 11-1 to run at the moment to make it a six-point game. That's Virginia defense. The dive guy thinks he has an advantage down low, but Huff is supplanted where he needs to be, loitering in the middle of the paint to take away any opportunity. One of the nation's best shot blockers with the denial. Ian Manny Bates, top two shot blockers in the ACC. Nice move by Moore to shake his defender, but unable to finish at the basket. Virginia looking to score in transition. Taken away from Huff. What you're starting to see, though, Virginia tighten up around the rim, not allowing things. You hate to see a defensive stop like that and then a giveaway when you're trying to pursue early offense. If it's not there, come down and work in the half court. Hayes for Bates, two defenders. He's got him parked under the basket. Manny Bates makes it 29-21. Love the patience from Bates. The double came. Huff was there. They had him pushed off. But when, Bates, when, when Huff retreated, the opportunity presented itself for Bates to then go attack the rim. That starts with patience from the big fell. Beekman, the fadeaway to end the half, and it is pure for Reese Beekman. Virginia down by as many as 14 in the first half, and they narrow that gap. NC State trying to get back-to-back -back road wins in as many seasons here in Charlottesville. Could ice cream be in the future tonight for the Wolfpack? 20 minutes, we'll have the answer. <laughs> this halftime report is presented by State Farm. When you want the real deal, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Back to the State Farm Halftime Report. NC State trying to make it four consecutive ACC road victories in a single season for the first time since 1974. And through 20 minutes, they're looking pretty good. My cousins, Jordan Cornette, glad you're a part of it tonight as well. Jordan, from what you saw in the first half, what separated the Wolfpack from the Cavaliers? Wolfpack executed offensively. Worked the ball around. Were aggressive in attack mode, trying to get things at the rim. But I loved how they competed defensively. I, I think that really yeah. set the tone. And here's a sequence to really illustrate what you saw for the pack defensively. Virginia trying to do what they typically do offensively. Kia Clark tries to drive. No. Drive and kick out. Contest. Four defenders in the paint. Kia Clark doesn't have it there. Then Beekman gives it a try. Make a chest. Highly contested. Punctuating the possession by rebounding. Then Shaq Moore out there blocking a jumper, a floater from Clark. Those are the type of plays that define the pack defense. Virginia found a little bit of a group. They did find some of those driving lanes late. It was mainly Jay Huff that was setting the tone offensively, making things happen. And of course, one of the best rim protectors in the country doing his job there as well. Virginia playing below its season percentages at the moment. They shot one of nine from three and a combined 10 points between Huff and Hauser. As you see, Huff had eight, Hauser only two. 
And very uncharacteristic for the Cavaliers to get outscored by 10 points in the paint. So we've got a six-point game at the break. NC State trying to make it wins in back-to-back -back years in Charlottesville. Second half is next. We've marched, prayed, rallied, voted, joined arms, and united. And yet, the effort has only just begun. We, we encourage, encourage everyone, everyone, in your own way, throughout each day, to help make this world decent, decent and fair, fair and honorable. honorable. From our campus to your home and community, we, we can, can do this. this. Together, Together, one interaction and one conversation at, at a time. time. Our women's basketball doubleheader tomorrow starts at 6 Eastern. It's Virginia Tech taking on Clemson at Little John Coliseum. And then Boston College squares off against Quentin Hillsman's Syracuse Orange with one of the best backcourts in the nation. Both games right here on the ACC Network and ESPN app. It all starts at 6 Eastern. Kevin Keats and the NC State Wolfpack. 10 and 9, 6 and 8 in the ACC. The last two years, the Wolfpack have finished 500 in the ACC. 10 and 10, 9 and 9. They can get within a game of 500 with a win here today. Jordan, what's it going to take in these final 20 minutes if they're going to win in this building in back-to-back -back years? Pack got to continue playing through the post and making the decisions that led to them building the lead in the first 20. Manny Bates, three assists, locating, understanding a double team's coming, kicking to the proper guy. Also, that perimeter for the pack, success driving the basketball. Can they continue that here in a second stanza? Virginia at home has been one of the best teams in the country this year. A perfect 9-0. And they've got the second most home wins without a loss behind only Michigan and UCLA, which are both a perfect 11-0 at home. This is Sebron from the corner, gets a wide open look and misses. And if Virginia is going to complete the comeback and get their 16th win of the year with a good second half, they've got to get more out of Sam Hauser, who scored only two points in those first 20 minutes and made one field goal. Don't overlook that Kafaro's getting the starting nod here in the second half as well. Obviously, like the minutes he gave, but I think it also speaks to what Murphy wasn't doing there in the first half as well. Quiet game for Murphy against Duke. Only took two field goals in that game against the Blue Devils. The second fewest of his career, going back to a 2018 game. When he was at Rice against Penn. So it's this bigger lineup. From Virginia, it'll be interesting to see how that impacts the offensive flow as well. Huff stands straight up and turns away Funderburk. That speaks to the shot blocking prowess of a guy like Huff. Funderburk got sped up. He got to the spot he wanted to be, played off two, but rushed the offering clearly inside his head that Huff is one of the best shot blockers in the country. Virginia stymied again. Through 22 minutes of play, the Cavaliers have yet to hold a lead today. Bob to the basket, Bates finds himself out of position. But he's got Kafaro on his back, and on the refeed, bobbles it, Virginia ball. We talked a little bit about the coaching challenge that Kevin Keats has faced this year. You said right at the beginning of the broadcast tonight, your team is very different when you lose Markel Johnson, among others, a guy who can distribute. You lose your leading scorer, Devin Daniels. There's three for Hauser to tie the game. And Kevin Keats, you're going back to the start of his college head coaching career at UNCW, took over a team that had nine wins that previous season and was the regular season champion all three of his years there in Wilmington. This year, no fifth-year guy coming in, but has done a great job acclimating the three freshmen to a lot of playing time. Yeah, and here, Virginia's getting back, finding their groove offensively. Beekman does a great job dribbling, collapsing the defense, finding Hauser gets his feet set right there. Hellam's just late on the uptick to get out to one of the better shooters in the country and Sam Hauser. And all of a sudden, for as bad as Virginia looked in the first half, credit the pack for that kind of performance. But this game is now tied. So Virginia's in a perfect place, obviously getting this game back to even. Uh, now it's going to come down to execution for both sides. Drive to the basket, swiped away by Manny Bates. Talk about one of the best shot blockers in the country. I don't think I've gotten that one in this broadcast. Much respect to Manny Bates and the ability he has to protect the rim as well. 
No, it's remarkable to think that you watch how successful he is at deterring opponents. He's only eighth in the country in block shots per game with about three, first in the ACC. And as I say that, Huff gets his block on the other side. Uh, these are two bigs that are really fun to watch. Uh, two different skill sets, uh, but both very important to their teams. A lot of traffic in the lane and on the rise. Four takes the hit and we'll go to the free throw line. Has not been to the free throw line very often this year. This would be just his 18th free throw attempt this season, shooting 47%. Nails the first. Up next, we'll finish off our triple header. It's number 11, Florida State in Coral Gables, taking on Miami. Florida State on fire right now. They've won eight of their last nine, taking over first place in the league. And it'll get them, if they do win, their 10th conference win of the year for the Seminoles, and their seventh straight in the series against the Hurricanes. Hauser found Beekman, who delivers to Huff out of position. 10 on the shot clock, UVA. Closed out by Funderburg. That leads to a Beekman three off front iron. That was a good defensive effort from Funderburg. I mean, he was challenged guard on the outside and the inside against Huff. Did the job. And they got the rebound going the other way. But you love to see Funderburg posting on a low block, guarding there, defending on the outside. Those type of efforts are what the Pack are going to need to do if they want to steal one on the road. This is ACC Unity Week, part of the conference's commitment to seeing each other as equals and treating each other with respect and dignity at all times. Looking back at 1974 as NC State tries to make it four straight ACC road wins in a single season. And the last time that happened was that 1974 season. For perspective, Kevin Keats, looking back at that, said, I was born in 1972. So it has been quite some time since this program has seen that level of success away from Raleigh. And look, everybody involved with the PAC program obviously wants to be in position to be playing to go to the tournament. And as of right now, that's not where this PAC team is. They've won six conference games. They're 10 and 9. But the job that Coach Keats has done with this, this group this season is admirable. And that speaks to he's absolutely the man for the job with the attrition that they have faced to be in this position to be competitive, to be winning on the road, to be in games like this, speak to he's clearly the right guy for this one. Yeah, you have to look at the bigger picture of where the program is now, but the circumstances they faced this year. And he's had to go through the case with Moore and Hayes and Sebron of throwing guys into the ocean who have only read a book about how to swim, but not actually had really many lessons and playing at this high of a level. And so it's it's a different challenge, but you you know, you get to this point in the season, you've talked about a lot of the X's and O's stuff. So we went back and, and visited his first coaching stop in the 96-97 season at Southwestern Michigan College. He got $5,000 a year, taught a weightlifting class, and was a dorm director there. And Jordan, you know from living in northern Indiana, he was in Dowajack, Michigan, just about 40 miles north of where you went to college. He had a Chevy Cavalier with no snow tires, and if you're not equipped to get around in the winter there, you're out of luck. <laughs> yeah, but I'll tell you what, I'm sure Coach Keats had that whip looking clean, if we know anything <laughs> about Coach Keats. $5,000 stipend, that's how much those shoes are that he's wearing these days. <laughs> at that point, he wasn't sure if he wanted to get into coaching, but a very successful run at Hargrave Military Academy, then an assistant at Louisville, 
UNC Wilmington and now here at NC State in his fourth season. He's had at least 20 wins in each of the first three seasons, but you know, we saw Florida State's going to play Miami, our next game at 8.30 here on ACC Network. Getting to 10 ACC conference wins this year is going to be an accomplishment for any team. Absolutely. Foul is on Hauser. We are tied again at 31. And again, the ability for the pack to generate offense inside the arc, but most especially in the painted area. That's where their success has been coming here post Evan Daniels injury. Uh, the identity of this team, much like we talk about the front line of UVA, they do a lot of that front line work on the outside of the perimeter because of the skill set. The front line for the pack like to get in that painted area and hurt you. And they are not afraid, given what this pack line defense does, to say, we're still going to be who we are and try and get it there. And they still are here in the second half with 15 minutes remaining. And I think to that point, too, knowing what Huff and Hauser are capable of, what Kihei Clark is capable of as well, it's been an admirable job from the front court defensively for NC State to limit the good shooting opportunities for Huff and Hauser, a combined two of seven from three between them. Yeah, absolutely. Making sure you're aware of personnel, closeouts, challenges, but a lot of that is effort and recovery to get out to guys, running them off the three-point line. Kihei Clark becomes bigger on him to get into that lane and open things up like on the last sequence where he was able to get to the rim and finish. Braxton Beverly stepping in front. And he gets called for the blocking foul. 5'9 guard doing what he does right here. Helms, that's a heck of an excitement. Low center of gravity. When Clark can play low and just simply blow by you. Uh, you would you'd love to see the shot blockers uh, in, a, in a Manny Bates and guys on this roster to get up in there and challenge. Uh, make it tough for Clark to finish over the top. A little too late to get there. The officials going over to the video monitor to take a look at the shot clock. We're told on that play. 33 all, 14-21 to go. NC State led by as many as 14 points in the first half. And Virginia has yet to lead in this game. In this venue, Cavaliers 9-0 this season. They've won by an average of almost 15 points a game. But the way this is playing out right now, looking like it may come down to the wire, is quite reminiscent of the first matchup between these two this year. But if it's played at this pace, and it's going to be a game one in the 50s, everybody knows that this is, that's Virginia saying, come into our pen and play. Close the cage, and they usually come out victorious there. So this is going to be a challenge for the Pack. Pack have struggled, obviously, here in this half. Haven't had a field goal yet where Virginia, three of six, two of three from distance, starting to regain their rhythm offensively here. And the team that averages 69 points a game, Virginia, Leads for the first time today with 34 points. Nice. Huff goes two of two. Beverly to Helms. And he's clipped on his way to the rim. That won't feel like points in the paint, but that's the dribble drive. Collapse the defense, kick over. That is the penetration that has been the undoing for Virginia, where they must be better defensively. Helms at the line where he shoots 81%. Best among their regulars. First one is no good. So Getting more for contributions. Cousins. From those, I'm two for two today. It's quite an impressive power. But Sebron, Hayes, and Moore, you go back to the first matchup and today, and the scoring contributions have already jumped. That's part of, you know, their increasing contributions minutes-wise, scoring-wise, as they distribute what Kevin Keats has pointed out multiple times, those 13 shots a game that once belonged to Devin Daniels. Yeah, but you also look, when you're looking at a young perimeter, only two turnovers for them. And look, Virginia's not a team that's going to turn you over a ton, but it speaks to decision-making that has allowed them to stay in this game with the potential to steal one on the road. This is a perimeter for the pack that are growing before our eyes and doing it on the road, quite frankly. There was a contested look from Huff, not a shot that he often takes. 
He often finds himself open because of their good ball movement. Beverly, dangerous from three, puts it through. NC State is back in front by two. Of those, that's the right decision in that sequence. And now they'll extend it out with some pressure. Usually you want to try and hit the dive guy on a pick and roll. But electing not to throw into what inevitably would be a turnover, kick it to the baseline for the open three-point look, and connect it. That is how you beat Virginia, but you have to have the threats. The Wolfpack have them from beyond the arc. Murphy and Helms, and it's an offensive foul against Murphy, who's been looking to get going, only two points today, and he turns it over. That's just good defensive position from Helms. Murphy is all kinds of out of whack in this one. Uh, still kind of maybe some confidence uh, shot from that Duke game where he didn't take more than two shots, but really can't find any sort of rhythm in this one. And Helms, a heady defensive play, the leader, emotional leader in Lighthouse for this pack team making things happen. He continues to be exceptional, as does Manny Bates. Six points now for Bates. The scoring well distributed among NC State as they're led by Helms with eight. On the other side, Huff, the leading scorer for Virginia with ten. Bates six points, good. Protecting the rim, good. But three assists as well. Early in the first half when those doubles were coming, it was Bates making the proper decision, locating his teammates for scoring opportunities. Murphy the miss from three. Bates undercut Huff there. It looks like that's where the foul will be on that play. Mike, when I talk about the Pack's execution offensively against his pack line defense, proper decision-making is key. And, and in this play, the angle doesn't really tell it, but what you're seeing is the dive guy is typically where you want to deliver. Sebron does not. He passes cross-court to Beverly, who's been shooting it confidently these last few games to knock down the three. So, Jordan, is that just punch-counterpunch as NC State figures out where they don't want to go? Then that's the freshman learning what the next pass needs to be? A hundred percent. I mean, Sebron's not a primary handler. He is a perimeter player and understanding through film and coaching that I'm not going to have the opportunity to pass over the top to Bates down low and comfortably catch and finish. They're going to collapse there. So when two, three defenders come into the paint, oh, Braxton Beverly, one of the best shooters in the history of the Wolfpack, is wide open on a baseline. Let me pass that thing across court to him for catch and shoot opportunity, and Beverly knocks it down. Hard to believe that was Beverly's first shot attempt of the day. So he's got three points. Another issue with the shot clock where we're told they're not matching up at the moment. And it's been interesting to become a body language reader with a mask on. You can still see there's a bit of a grievance with Tony Bennett and I guess his appraisal of the way his team has played so far. Friday night, 10 Eastern, we'll have our next bald man not on campus. Jay Billis, LaFonso Ellis, Seth Greenberg, preview the ACC slate of weekend games and have the latest news from around the conference that's only on ACC Network and the ESPN app. Saturday, a pretty good little afternoon. If you've got some time for it at 4 o'clock on ESPN, you'll see Florida State and North Carolina. And then 6 o'clock, a game that should be great, Louisville at Duke, also on ESPN. Yeah, how about what Dukes looked like as of late here? Didn't think Joe Lenardi would, would have them uh, in the vernacular as he did his hits during this season, but Dukes played themselves in here, uh, doing it defensively, uh, rugged effort on the interior, and they've been some shot making, most especially Matthew Hurtley in the way. Duke is sitting right now as one of the first four out, and then Georgia Tech, with their nice play, has found themselves in the next four out. And so Duke has Louisville, Georgia Tech, North Carolina, a chance to add to their resume down the stretch. Virginia, a number four seed at the moment. But Joe Lenardi has the ACC pegged for six teams into the tournament, which would be its fewest since 2015. To me, Duke's resurgence here speaks to the culture. All the conversation about Jalen Johnson leaving, it's how that team and the coaching staff rallied around Jalen, protecting him despite the negative noise, while also focusing within. And that is the type of locker room that is bred through culture over the years to say, Jalen's still our guy. We won't tolerate any negativity about him. 
but we're also going to come together even more so and play even better basketball. And to me, that's years of a culture being built under Coach K, a staff that's connected with their players and the buy-in coming to its apex at the most important time. Clark from the outside. And foul on the floor goes on Beverly. That's his second. Five fouls total in the first half, already nine here in the second half. And you look back over the last several years, 14-15 was the last time the ACC had as few as six. The low water mark was 2013 when they had four. Duke, Miami, NC State, North Carolina, which preceded Maryland going to the Big Ten and Syracuse and Louisville joining to make it the 15-team Super League that it is today. I'll tell you, the pack got lucky defensively on that last possession right there. On the ball screen situation, pick and pop from Huff. Manny Bates got a little bit confused, was nowhere to be found. And to their luck, Huff couldn't connect it. Foul on Virginia. Here are the 12 to play at JPJ, 39-35. Virginia, NC State in a close one, and NC State cannot have defensive sequences like this anymore in the game. They dodged a bullet here, but on the exchange, Beekman takes it, and you see Helms and Bates watching the ball. I don't know what their defensive package is there, but I know it does not include stepping back and allowing Huff a clean look there, 45% three-point shooter. You got to communicate there, understanding the ability for Huff to pop off the pick is always there, so don't lose sight of that. Fortunately, Huff doesn't make the three. Fortunately for the pack, they dodge one there. Virginia is shooting an uncharacteristically low 20% from three today. Chaos into the lane. A speedy drive. Jam on the brakes. Shaquille Moore with two more for NC State. And I love the mentality to extend the pressure out here so the pack can keep the identity of who they are. Even though it's Virginia who's great with the basketball, only give it away less than 10 times a game, it's still what the pack thrive on. Getting some takeaways, trying to get out on the open floor, but ultimately speed up the pace of this game, especially because of how the pack are operating in the half court with success. They want more possessions. They want more cracks at it because they know they can score against this Virginia defense. The up-tempo style is what they've always wanted to do. They haven't always been able to do it because of injuries that have hurt them over the last several seasons, including this one. But they also just have to look to recent history to see that Virginia has struggled under pressure, giving it away more often than is characteristic for them. And Hauser gets the bucket, makes it a four-point game. Got to give Bates a touch here. Keep him interested. He's been making proper decisions. Or the dribble drive for Moore always works. That has been there all game long as well. This is where Virginia has been struggling. This is the difference between a typical Virginia defense and the Virginia defense that is exposed at times this season. That's quite simply a blow by a beak. And we talked about it earlier in the broadcast, Mike. It's a young guy in this program learning what it takes to defend. It's a freshman. And he's going to understand that that's not good enough as he grows. And he will grow because this program is one of the best in the country. But more being able to blow by like that, we'll get you the whistle and a seat on a bench. Is there some laps to be discussed there, though, on the help side defense from Hauser, too? Absolutely. And that's, that's a big part of the pack line presence is somebody comes over to protect the rim. But let's not underestimate the explosiveness of Moore to be able to get there before anybody can. That was a quick blow by, blow by an impressive move. Kafaro with the catch and the short range miss. NC State has scored on five straight trips down the floor. So now Morcell into the game. See if he can slow down more on the perimeter. They bring Bates for the high ball screen. As he rolls, Virginia comes up with a steal. They've got numbers two on one against Helms to the basket. And the try no good for McCoy, so it's NC State quickly back the other way. Is it Sebron or LeBron? I mean, what an effort getting back defensively there in transition to challenge at the rim. I can feel my Twitter mentions. 
grow as I make the reference. All I'm yeah, saying is I love right the effort. <laughs> Not giving up on a play, though. I mean, McCoy is an easy one. Seabrock came out of nowhere. Those are the competitive plays that have led to the pack building a lead. They have been there every step of the way tonight. And to go back a couple possessions ago when Moore had the blow by on Beekman, that was one thing that Kevin Keats told us the other day. He was worried about his team being able to do successfully because of the pack line principles. The help usually cuts you off, and if you don't make the pass to the open shooter, you usually get trapped. That wasn't yeah. the case. Oh. And, and it, it also does speak to the ability uh, of Moore to drive that basketball and that's why every time I'm on a pack broadcast I give love the number two because he's got a really bright future in a coach Keats system uh, and aggressive in nature unafraid and supremely confident that's what allowed him to drive it there and get to the rim struggles continue for three for Virginia they're getting some good looks from there now they're just not falling they're 3 of 16 from three-point range overall. Field goal percentage at 35%. It's a team that shoots better than that from three on a season. 40% from distance. Just not their data. Sebron puts it on the deck. Nine minutes to play. Virginia has won nine of the last ten against NC State. The Wolfpack were winners here last season, 53-51. Virginia off on its last six three-point tries. To Bates' credit, he's out there contesting. Still a clean look from Huff, who couldn't get it, but this is an advantage Clark. Can he make something happen? Instead, he's got to pick up his dribble, and it goes to Morcel, who tries the three. No good. Callum's oh, lost it. You so did such a for three great more job seconds. defensively. Every time penetration came, you make it meet a chest. You can't punctuate it with the rebound to get yourself going offensively the other way. Can Virginia take advantage of the opportunity? So Bates gets a breather. When the clock goes under eight minutes, the next whistle. We'll get an extended timeout, so that's designed to give him a little bit more time. And Trey Murphy, who we spoke about, Jordan, right at 6.30 when we got on the air, said if they were going to win today, they'd need more from him than they got against Duke. And it has not been the case. I can promise you it's not his offense. Coach Bennett puts guys on the bench because they're not defending and they're not connected there. They're going to need a better effort defensively, trailing by eight with eight and a half left to play. Last season, NC State comes to Charlottesville in what has been a very lopsided series, and the Wolfpack come away victorious, 53-51. Man, it's weird to see people in the stands, isn't it? <laughs> a whole lot of them, too. I hate that that's where my brain goes. I hate it. Yeah, it's just weird now. A last-second shot from Morcell falls short. So NC State, winners there. They'll try and do it again in this game today after losing by seven in the first matchup of the season back on February 3rd between these two teams. That was the last time that Virginia lost here at home. They're 9-0 on home floor this season, winning by almost 15 points a game. It doesn't seem like this game is going to be decided by that many. And Jay Huff gets an uncontested look at the rim. How about the look from Trey Murphy? Trey dropping a dime, put some sauce on it. Huff, I at those are the type of possessions. Yeah, it only counts for two, but it lifts the confidence of your group. And maybe that's the turning point. Not quite. Down low again. The pack have been making things happen at the rim. That is not the norm against a Virginia defense. Really impressive how the pack continue to stay within what their identity has been when they're successful. Scoring in the painted area. 26 of NC State's 47 points have come in the paint. But it, it's the, it's, you take a punch, I'm sitting here celebrating Virginia, but you know what, Pack, come right back, counter punch. We got ourselves a good one, Mike. Welcome back to ACC Network Basketball. This is ACC Unity Week. 
NC State looking to get a win on the road. And a tradition under Kevin Keats, when they win away from home, there is ice cream to be had. This is the assistant director of basketball operations, Chris Zupko for the Wolfpack, who you know, has many duties, but also among those is procuring ice cream after the game. And there's backstory to it this year. The game at Clemson, he told Kevin Keats, don't worry, coach, I have the spot. I got the ice cream spot post game. It's all figured out. Kevin Keats said, no, man, you jinxed it. You jinxed it. They knew we were going to lose that game. So they win at BC. They're up by 30 points, 10 minutes to go. At that point, though, it was now verboten to order the ice cream until after the game was over because they didn't want to jinx it. So NC State looking to get four ACC road wins in a row in the same season since 1974 is up six with under eight to go. This has been their game all the way, but you can be sure, Jordan, the ice cream has not been ordered. There is no greater motivation in life than to say a job well done on the other side, you'll be rewarded with ice cream. Oh if that God. was if that was <laughs> just tinkered, just dangled in front of me with everything, I'll tell you, I'd be thriving in life at a higher clip than I am current. I'm just not promised ice cream enough, clearly. Did you tell us off the air you're eating one time a day? What is the deal with that? So as I tell you that, you then decide coming back into the broadcast, let's talk about ice cream. Come on, man, what are we doing here? <laughs> Body's no accident. I can't get those thoughts in my head. We got a good game going here in the final seven minutes. I can't be thinking about ice cream. He's Jordan Cornette, Notre Dame's all-time leading shot blocker. I'm Mike Cousins, NC State in Virginia. As we near the home stretch of the ACC regular season, the Cavaliers just off the lead in the ACC behind Florida State. The Wolfpack start the day 10th in the lead. Huff with a strong take. An even stronger rejection at the rim. The lead remains eight. The Wolfpack playing up to their full potential tonight in Charlottesville. What a defensive effort. There's two pack defenders there waiting to meet Huff at the rim. Ultimately, I think it's Funderburg who blocks the shot. But talk about a group that is a sense of urgency connected. Helms comes, but the recovery from, from Funderburg, it looked like there to ultimately block that shot. Just defensively, truly competing in this game. It's been fun to watch from this pack squad. Jordan, that's been one of the most impressive aspects of this game is the job the forwards have done is defending the Virginia big men on the outside because when they're out there, they're not just a threat to pass, they're a threat to score. Inside six and a half to go. Penetration by Clark, a dish to Morsell. That's an advantage. Huff has to get Huff. a touch. Huff's got to get a touch there. Moore's defending down low. you got to find a way to dump that down to your big fellow. That's an easy two or a foul. That's a missed opportunity from Virginia offense. We Shaq Moore defending Jay Huff. That, that, that's an obvious basket that you got to get. you got Huff standing 7 foot 1 and a guard on him. Yes, sir. Thunderbird thunders to the rim. And she stayed up by 10. There is... Nobody defensively in the painted area defending protecting the rim for Virginia And that is something you never say about a pack line defense a coach Bennett led Defense and that has been without question his biggest frustration with the team this season 28 points in the paint For the pack. I mean nobody home It doesn't get any easier now And it puts Clark at the free throw line. Scored 15 against Duke. His second highest output of the season. Kihei Clark up to eight. Leading scores for Virginia. Hauser has recovered after a two-point first half. He and Huff both have 12. And DJ Funderburg, a team-high 11 for NC State. Dallin Cuff, colleague and friend. Just text us both. Mike said he wants to know what my one meal of the day is. Now he is the beacon of health. I'll never get to that, but it was bacon and eggs. I kept it really simple today. That's why I'm starving. That's it. But my appetite is being fed by this great game going on right here because these last five and a half minutes, it's going to come down to the ability for the pack to execute and Virginia to find some sort of rhythm offensively and try to get some stops and be better in the interior because they've been exposed there tonight. 
I know you're cooking with your spurtle. You're working on your ab coaster. You are a. You've got everything figured out these days. By what the way, apps? <laughs> we have a women's basketball doubleheader that starts at six Eastern tomorrow. You can watch that uh, before, after, or during your one meal. It'll be Virginia Tech and Clemson in South Carolina, and then it's Boston College and Syracuse, 8 Eastern on ACC Network. Don't forget, by the way, when we are done here, we'll send you to Miami and Florida State. Mike Monaco, Dan Bonner will have that one for you. Florida State leading the league right now and looking for their seventh straight win against Miami. 5.35 to play. NC State up 51-43 in a game where they led by as many as 14. Virginia's largest lead today has just been two. Thunderbird kicked it away. This feels like a really big possession for Virginia. Down eight. Clark likely got away with an offensive foul there with the ward off. And they reset it on the perimeter. Not a high-level offensive unit on the squat on, on the floor right now for Virginia. So belaboring to get baskets with Beekman and McCoy out there, giving up a lot offensively. Ellum's relatively quiet tonight for the Wolfpack, just eight after he scored 23 when they met earlier this month. The shot clock has dwindled to eight, so Helms lets it fly. This is reminiscent of the first matchup where there were long stretches, three minutes, sometimes more, where NC State was all able to hold Virginia without a made field goal and a much needed one right there. They hadn't hit one in almost four minutes as they get the three pointer. And it's going to have to be the play of Clark who get that, who delivered that ball to Huff for the catch and shoot. Sequences like that from Clark, Huff's ability to make shots, and obviously Hauser uh, to ride home here in the final four minutes. NC State with a strong defensive effort. Everybody gets a breather at the next whistle. This is Thunderbird up and the foul on Huff. He'll go to the free throw line when we come back. And Jordan, the Wolfpacker, riding high with 3.52 to go. Thunderbird getting busy, loitering on a low block. Gluttonous. Clap those hands, show that big right hand, catch and finish over Huff. Pat roll. Let's check out the best stuff brought to you by Papa John's. Defensively, it, it's, it's been uh, effort all game long for the pack. Thunderbird on the defensive side set the tone, but also just demanding the basketball down low, having great success against who's ever defending him down there. 13 points, five of nine, three of four from the free throw line. Uh, he's been the tone setter for a team that has followed suit. What I love from this pack squad in this game is they haven't taken away who they've been because of who the opponent, the opponent is. Okay, so the pack line defense typically takes away stuff at the rim. Well, something's got to give because that's how we score the basketball is in NC State's philosophy. And they've been paying it off by staying in character and execute. And for Funderburg, last year he scored 14 against Virginia in that win here at JPJ. Make it six straight games where he scored 10 or more. Free throw drops for the big man. 54-46 inside, four minutes to go. It really feels like it falls on Kihei Clark to make plays like that. That's got to be a catch and shoot from McCoy. And the three-pointer belongs to Hauser, who's got 15. He and Huff have 30 of the 49 Virginia points. Can this young backcourt of the pack bring this one home? Decision making on these possessions amplified without question. Can they continue to get that offense on the inside like they have for 37 minutes of play tonight? Hayes tried to step back, had it swatted away by Beekman. Shot clock down to two, and the bucket goes. Wow. <laughs> A desperation <laughs> heave. How about that to beat the shot clock? Hayes, exactly where he wanted it. I'm going to fake the giveaway, 
chaos squares up anything is possible off the glass bank is indeed open after hours over a seven foot one jay huff mind you degree of difficulty scale one to ten a 75. celtics fans everywhere appreciate your shout out by the way big kg guy over here late 2000s so for a seven year old over here <laughs> Virginia <laughs> lost against Duke. Their last time out, they've lost back-to-back -back games for the first time this year. And you have to go back to last year, last season, a three-game skid in January of 2020 against Boston College, Syracuse, and Florida State. Clark aggressively to the basket, gets fouled, stops the clock at 2.57. Where was this in the first half? I mean, this is clearly the key to success offensively for this who's squad is Kihei Clark beating this packed perimeter off the bounce, getting into the paint and either drawing a foul, finishing or kicking out to a shooter. You have to ride that in these final three minutes, but no matter how good you are offensively, you got to get stops on the other side. Failure to do so here tonight. Well, I think back to that first half, too, where we saw some of those unusual lineup combinations from Tony Bennett early on just trying to see if he could spark anything going and you've got McCoy tonight who's played about 15 minutes and averages only about 10 a game so he's seeing more time than usual there's no greater indicator than when a team that is winning at the clip Virginia is is searching within a game for the proper personnel to lead them to a win Thunderbird missed it more, nearly had a highlight reel follow on the dunk. But Virginia's got to defend for 20 more seconds on the offensive board. Don't sleep on Moore's bunnies. My man's got bounce. Thunderbird was there for the screen. Moore down the lane. Huff turns him away. Two minutes to go. NC State leads number 15, Virginia, by six on the road. Jump ball. And it belongs to NC State. That is crushing. You get the stop you need in a two-possession game. And Beekman tries to play hero ball. You need to pull that thing out, set your offense, get it to Kihei Clark, try and generate another good one. That is an opportunity you cannot afford to give up with under two minutes left to play. Court pressure on from Virginia. Token, though, as Beekman backs up into the half court and tries to lock down on Hayes. Kevin Keats calls a timeout with a minute 44 to go. All right, a reminder to fans to download the ACC three-point challenge app presented by New York Life to help benefit the local boys and girls clubs score points for your school and after the tournament the local boys and girls club will receive a donation from new york life based on their affiliated acc teams final ranking and if i am in the pack huddle i i gotta imagine dj funderburg saying cool cool i'm getting the ball right because that's what should happen here in this possession i would challenge the intestinal fortitude and the interior defensively from Virginia, which has not been there for the majority of this game, and say, can you stop us when you really need to? DJ Funderburg has had wild success down low. He's taken 10 shots. I expect an 11th on this possession. What do you think Tony Bennett is thinking? I wish I had Mama Didi Akite and Braxton Key. <laughs> I, wish my, I wish my new guys had been a part of this system for a couple years, as great as they've been. They just aren't quite getting the expectation defensively here. Something along those lines, Mike. A fair assessment of the way this game has gone today. The interior pass, Huff collides with Thunderbird. They both hit the deck, and Virginia down six, ends up with possession. Clark with the speed advantage there on Thunderbird. Doesn't capitalize and now gets it back, but Helen switches on to the point guard. He's got to go high on the drive. Huff was trapped and bumped. That's a foul on the Wolfpack.
Jordan, I want to revisit a point that you made earlier as we looked at the way Duke defended some of the ball screens against Virginia, and the Cavaliers weren't always quick to capitalize on seeing things. Is that applicable to that last possession where Kihei Clark is being guarded by the five-man for NC State? Yeah, and they're really challenging and say, okay, Kihei, you're a great talent, but you're on the smaller side. Can you make those reads with length, athleticism, and great size in your face? And more often than not, it hasn't happened. This is a good Virginia offense. They've scored 52 points in this game. Don't get it twisted. They don't want to be playing games in the 50s. This is an inability for them to get going offensively. And that is a, a huge hat tip defensively to what the Pack have done tonight. And that's why I'm such a big believer in Coach Keats and where he can take this program. They've had a lot of bad luck this season, but these guys compete. They're young, and this is what they're capable of doing. And they close it out here in the final 61 seconds. Foul is on Clark. Both teams double bonus here the rest of the way with 61 seconds to play. But look at the Wolfpack, and you get the sense everybody on that bench is standing. They feel victory is imminent. Moore on the free throw gets the first to go. A lot of game left. <laughs> free throw made or not made here. It's a two possession game. Virginia, they're the reigning national champions. They're not going to get tight here. They're going to try and execute as best as possible in this narrow window of opportunity still left. So by no means is this one a done deal. Hauser, McCoy, Beekman, and Huff on the floor for Virginia. They send it out for Hauser, a fadeaway three, reminiscent of a late game possession against Duke. And that's no good. They got to bring much the pressure. Like, and much like this entire game has been, Mike, defensively locked in, disciplined are the pack, contesting Hauser to take a low percentage one. They get the rebound and are fouled headed to the free throw line. Jordan, I continue to agree with you that when the final story of this game is written outside of Raleigh, North Carolina, it will be that Virginia lost if it does end up being that way. But really, the story within the story is how well NC State has defended today. Two things. How uncomfortable are you with yourself for the fact that you've agreed with me so much in this broadcast? That's number one. I'm sure you're asking some questions. <laughs> First but two, absolutely. I agree with you, Mike. Uh, we are both in concert there. This is a pack win, not a Virginia loss. Although I still do have questions about the one meal thing. We'll settle that off the air. We've got Florida State Miami coming up next. That game just about to get underway here on ACC Network. Huff gets two, 61-55, the lead for NC State. A whole lot of colleagues have questions there. Laura Brownlow, Sarah Spain. Look, I'm just trying to be my best self. I don't have the answers. Maybe this is wrong. I'm not that angry on the one meal plan. Am I, Mike? No, I just, I don't know how I'd make it throughout the day. Are snacks allowed? Uh, I mean, look, I don't live in a prison here. I mean, my wife allows me to eat whatever I want. <laughs> it's just, this is a choice I'm making. Well, it appears as though ice cream is going to be on the menu tonight for NC State before they get back on the plane and head back to RDU. When they land there, they will be bellies full. To solidify this win, there's three for Hauser, 63-58 with 25 ticks to go. Remember the historical significance of a road win for NC State, too, to get four straight ACC road victories within the same season. The last time it happened was 1974, and their head coach, Kevin Keats, was only born two years before that. Hey, Mike, you better chill out, though. There's still 25 seconds left here in a five-point game. This one is not a done deal. Nothing signed, sealed, or delivered quite yet. Got to make your free throws. Got to be good with the basketball here. Virginia's going to have some opportunities. Can the pack close this one out?
also impressive on the NC State side, too, is that you look at their top scorers tonight. Funderburg has been exceptional with 14 points. And then you've got Moore and Hayes behind him, two freshmen. Helms, who is averaging 13 a game, he's their active leading scorer with Devin Daniels out, has been limited to only eight points tonight. And Braxton Beverly has taken two shots and scored three points. And I'll tell you, I, Funderburg's performance, huge. The story, really, for the pack. But you also have to, as a Pack fan, looking towards your future and what this team's developing into, Cam Hayes has put together a third straight impressive performance. Cam Hayes, zero turnovers, 14 points. And no assists, that's five, but he managed the game well. And Shaq Moore, the lift he gave this team off the bench, two of your freshmen that are going to really be this team for years to come, the way those two have come together, it's no surprise that this NC State team, if they can close it out, will be riding a three-game win streak. Development within the program is always how you want to judge a team. Are they getting better? NC State's getting better. And you look at how fragile things can be today with news around the league that Xavier Johnson is leaving the Pitt program. He's an assist machine, has helped them grow under Jeff Capel. He was their second recruit behind Trey McGowan's. And so to be able to continue to build with youth will be something to behold for NC State going into the future. Cam Hayes today with 14 points makes it three straight games with 10 or more after having not scored more than 10 since December 3rd. Beverly gets the first. Well, you know the loafer's got to stay now for Coach Keats. I mean, you know how superstitious he is. Those loafers yeah, those may not come anywhere. off. Yeah. Because we won't see the red suit this year, unfortunately. But the, the red shoes have got to stay. I mean, nobody, we, as you know, Mike, is more superstitious in the league than Coach Keats. So you're going to be seeing them things. Hauser with another three. It'll be more free throws for NC State. Once the foul comes from Virginia, if they can get it in. But Hallams looks for help and calls timeout. So Sam Hauser, two points in the first half, 19 here in the second. A little bit too late here from the three-point line as these are starting to, to roll in, although he has five of them tonight. I mean, tough, tough shots, too, here down the stretch. A pair of threes to extend this game a little bit longer here. Um, but some early on in the second half, catch and shoot. They were locating him. He was getting some going. Well, he simply just hasn't got enough help around it. But Trey Murphy is not delivering and being a productive offensive threat. The dynamic shifts, and you don't have the balance that Virginia has enjoyed. And here late, he's hitting a couple tough. Ones. Now, if you're Virginia come out of this timeout, you're going to try to maybe get in there, earn a deflection, maybe a violation on the inbound. But you're not going to foul right away. You're going to try and give yourselves maybe a two, three second window to see if NC State's going to be tight. Then you foul and see if they can make the free throws. Got to be confident with the ball if you're the pack. They go with Murphy off the ball. The inbounds deflected. NC State keeps it. Oh, you want to go the monitor on that one. You don't want that to just be a pack ball, keep it moving. You got the ability to look at that under two minutes. Going to make him work for it here in the final 15. And it looked like it was indeed off Morsell, but. So they're going to take a look at that. 15.3. They would need indisputable video evidence to overturn the call on the floor that the ball still belongs to NC State. Yeah, see, I've only had one meal today. If I would have had two, my eyesight would be a little bit stronger. So, Mike, you might have to help me out here. It Should looks to me. Carrots. Oh, hold the phone. Yeah, it looks to me like ultimately that sophomore sells right here. I think Maybe I, even again. I might, have to, I might have to send an email to the uh, stats and information group at ESPN after this because we're going to get you to Florida State and Miami as soon as this game is over. That's an 8.30 tip-off Eastern time. 
to see how many times a Virginia game has preempted the game following it. And if I were in Bennett studio, and my man Dallin Cuff knows what I'm talking about, we'd be overjoyed by this. There'd be no fill. Another look there. I think you're going to see Morcel touch it even a second time here. It looked like it was last off Morcel there, but he goes back again and touches it. So that should be pretty clear. It's off Morcel, pack ball. My thought in this situation is the rule book says you must have indisputable video evidence. If you look at the call and you go, eh, I don't know, then it's in dispute. Boom, let's, let's keep it moving. Now, granted, part of the review also is to look at the clock and make sure that is situated properly when the ball lands out of bounds to make sure that the clock matches and is what it should be. But overall, these reviews sometimes take longer than they should. That is, that is a fair grade. You want to keep it moving. But you also want to be able to get it right. So there's a fine balance between the two. But what it does speak to ultimately, though, too, is Packer getting a little bit tight here in the final 15 seconds. Pressure is being dialed up a little bit here. Obviously, a sense of urgency with Virginia trailing by four and 15 seconds left. Can you be confident delivering the basketball? Possess it. Take on a foul and make your free throws here. The more standing around, solid. the more heightened the nerves come, become. They have been solid at the line. They've made their last 13 free throws. So they have not faltered there. I mean, just imagine ice cream being dangled in front of you for this long. I mean, the pack of probably It's thinking, melting. It's probably melting right now. Let's get this thing over with. I want that. Now, what flavor are you going, Mike, by the way? I'm going cookie dough with hot fudge. Jeez. Maybe you should what you be got? Uh, <laughs> I, I, anything as long as you got sprinkles on it. Literally I'm, anything. I'm glad to know that you're a sprinkles guy and not someone who calls them Jimmy's. I've never heard that in my life. Wow. Are you looking at me sideways because I never heard of that? Ultimately, <laughs> yeah. the call gets right here. It's packed I'm basketball. Learning, I'm learning so much about you today. <laughs> So the clock has been recalibrated, 15.8 seconds. A suboptimal inbounding spot to get it in the corner. Helms on the apex of the A in Virginia and a seven foot one Huff in front of him. And that go. ball is Virginia's ball. With all the pressure of waiting, Moore has it bounced off his mitts and the Cavaliers have the ball down four. I'm telling you, a view like that, all that time standing there seeing the finish line, you get inside your head. I mean, that's a ball that's caught every other time. I mean, that is the outlying position. But again, speaking to trying to close it out, guys get tight at the end. Freshman mistake, door open for Virginia. Don't need a three, just need it quick, whatever it is. I can tell you, going back to my playing days, Mike, I hated all that standing around in a tense situation like this. You're taken out of your rhythm of game flow. Definitely, yeah, so the clock extra time came off the clock, though. The clock went too long, so it's been adjusted to 15.4, so just a few tenths of a second came off there. What's the strategy or mindset defensively for NC State? I mean, you definitely don't want to foul anything beyond the arc. You want to communicate, most likely switch everything here. Be disciplined in how you guard. No reckless fouling and rebound. Switch it everything. He the inbounder. He gets it to Hauser, guarded by Funderburk. A try for three. Front rim around and Oof. out. And the rebound by Sebron. Now just 8.6 to play. Hauser has been red hot this half, but does not get it there. Man. Uh, that was all. I, you, you can't miss any better than Sam Hauser did on that one. That thing hung for an eternity up there on the rim. Good contest. Funderburg played without foul and dangerous with how intensely he did contest. Hauser probably could have used his body a little bit more and generated a whistle. You see that so many times in three three pointers in crucial times in a game like that. But credit to Funderburg, able to apply the pressure without violating.
So one timeout left for Virginia. Both teams in the double bonus. And to Virginia's advantage, down four here in the waning moments. They've got the possession arrow in the event of a tie-up. Still an opportunity for Virginia. By the NC way, I want to get State this. And made their last 13 free throws. Just had a further time to think, Mike. I'd definitely go chocolate milkshake if I could. I'd try to uh, bend the rules a little bit, see if I could go not ice cream, but chocolate milkshake. The dairy category, and we'll allow it. Yes. Survey says yes. 66-61. NC State last year, a winner in this building by two, up by five. Kihei Clark. That ball gets knocked loose. And one more foul from Hauser, but with 1.6 seconds to go, NC State can see, smell, and taste a victory in Charlottesville. Really impressive performance from the pack. Brought it defensively, stayed within the identity of who they are, got it at the basket, made some shots on the perimeter, moved it. This Virginia defense needs to take a long look in the mirror. They can't be pleased with how they allowed so much inside and at the rim tonight. Held under their season scoring average of almost 70 points a game. NC State deposits 68 on the Virginia Cavaliers. Three straight in the loss column and three straight in the win column. Opposite sides tonight, Jordan. This was an impressive one from start to finish. NC State showed that, that maybe they're not beating the top teams on the road. Well, that conversation ends tonight. Beating the 15th ranked Virginia team, a true national title contender. What an impressive performance of Coach Keats' squad. So for our entire crew, my partner Jordan Cornett, I'm my cousin saying thanks for watching. Let's send you to Coral Gables, Florida, FSU Miami.